Hello everybody, it's uh, really a pleasure and an honor to be part of this fantastic symposium. Um, I want to thank the organizer for having me. Uh, we're going to be discussing today uh, what are the best patients to benefit from uh, GI uh, anastomosis, such as gastroenterostomy and gastrogenostomy. So, therapeutic EOS has dramatically uh, changed the whole panorama of endoscopy. So, we can now do therapeutic injection using EOS. We can do ablation therapy using EOS. We can do drainage procedures such as draining uh, fluid collection or the gallbladder using EOS. But um, one thing that we have been able recently to start doing is doing EOS guided gastroenterostomy, whether it's gastrojejunal anastomosis, gastrojejunal anastomosis. We really now have been able to do this um, uh, almost on a daily basis for multiple type of intervention. So the current uh, status for patients that have gastric other obstruction include antral stenting, PEG-J or PEG, and obviously surgical gastrogenostomy, which is a good um, option, but an invasive option. So the idea is, can we offer an anastomosis using EOS guided um, technique? whether you connect to the jejunum or the jejunum, the idea is to place a lumina in metal stent to create that anastomosis. So what are the data? Well, actually, there's three major trials that uh, look at that um, concept. You can see here that those are trials that include anywhere between 10 to almost 30 patients. And uh, the idea is it is feasible. Now, the question is, does it work in any kind of uh, patient? So obviously, uh, it's very interesting to consider this as a palliation mechanism for people that have uh, pancreatogobilial malignancy or tudinal or malignancy. But actually, it's very interesting to look at data in benign diseases as well, because those are the patients that's going to live the longest. If you now look at comparing study which look at the outcome on patients that have gastroenterostomy versus patients that have uh, surgical uh, GJ, for instance, uh, or laparoscopic GJ. You can see that the, the procedure is as successful in both groups. However, EOS guided uh, GJ or GE seem to be uh, safer, but also offer a lower cost, which is extremely interesting in this settings where we're trying to offer a healthcare system where the, the cost is driven down. Now, let's compare EOS guided GJ or GE in general to antral stenting. We can see that the efficacy is the same. However, because you're away from the area of obstruction caused by cancer, for instance, or by inflammation, you tend to have less recurrence gastric other obstruction in the group of EOS guided GE and less session of revision, obviously. So what are the techniques that we can uh, offer to our patient to create an EOS-guided gastroenterostomy? So one technique will be to puncture a loop of bowel in which water is trapped between a catheter that has equipped with two balloons, or to puncture the bowel that contain a, a balloon that is filled with water in contrast. To use a hybrid rendezvous where a slim scope is inserted into the small intestine and the EOS scope is in the stomach and you do a rendezvous. Do you use also a jejunal puncture, notes or reverse anterogastrostomy? During jejunal puncture, you have to find a jejunal loop, puncture with the needle and then slowly, you know, inflate the, the loop of bowel using in uh, co contrast mixed with, uh, with water. No technique consists in opening the stomach into the peritoneum with a scope and then finding a loop and connecting it directly to the stomach using uh, this open approach, open uh, into the stomach, I mean, but it's still an, an endoscopic approach. A reverse gastroenterostomy is when you're able to cross the obstruction, get into uh, a decent loop of bowel, and then 
connect with the stomach using Lumina pose in mental stance. So the big question is what, are, what technique is better than the other one? So those are the images of all the technique you see here. Rendezvous technique here. Reverse GJ technique here. Puncture in a balloon and then the technique where you puncture the loop of bowel and inflate with normal saline mixed with contrast. So the biggest question is how easy is this? So we did a study here on the right side where we look at the learning curve. Indeed, this is not like doing a cis gastrostomy. The bowel is a mobile target. It wants to move away from you. So the question is, how many pursuits does it take to become comfortable? So for somebody who has therapeutic EOS skills, it seems that it requires approximately seven procedures to finally um, get to uh, comfort level. This is not getting expertise, but becoming comfortable with the procedure. Obviously, the technique has become much easier now that we have uh, the core enhanced uh, uh, device, uh, the, the hot axios. So now, when you compare different techniques to one another, here a very interesting comparative technique comparing the direct puncture once the bowel is being inflated with normal saline uh, mixed with the methyl and blue contrast versus the technique where you use a balloon assisted puncture it seems that the direct puncture is the winner according to, to this study so let's go over the data and now from the data let's try to, to see how to realize you know a eus guided gas, gastroenterostomy so you see it's a very nice tea, cancer involving the, the the distal end of the stomach and creating a gastric outlet obstruction we're going to cross the obstruction with the ball tip, and you see we're going to try to go as deep as we can. A coilar wire into the small intestine, and then over the wire, advance a, a nasocystic catheter that will be used to inflate the small intestine. It's a 7 French device that goes through any scope. And you can see here we're going to advance that catheter over the wire. And then once it's uh, uh, at the level of the ligament, ligament of trites or beyond, we're going to pull the wire, create the first pigtail, and then we see we can then inflate the loop of bowel. We're going to first puncture the bowel with a 19 gauge needle to confirm indeed that we are in the small intestine. Inject contrast, confirming the location, very important. The, the colon can, can really mislead you. It does, in this case, then it's, it's crucial to, to inject contrast and make sure we are at the right place. After that, we can advance the colon enhanced Axios, you see we deploy the first um, flange, then we're going to oppose the bowel to the stomach and then deploy the second flange into the stomach. We advance the wire into the small intestine to, to have a safety net and then deploy the second flange into the stomach. You can see the methylene blue pouring from the small intestine into the stomach. We're going to dilate with a 20 millimeter balloon, the 20 millimeter lumina posing metal stent here, the axios. And then we like to place a double pigtail to just decrease the friction between the inner flange of the pigtail with the, the opposite wall of the small intestine. We have to be able, when you embark on doing US GATA GE, to manage complication. Indeed, misdeployment, migration of the lamps can occur. You can have a distal flange that migrate outside the small bowel lumen. You can have a proximal flange migrate outside the gastric lumen. Salvage with a bridging stent is often feasible and recommended. Or you can remove the lambs and close the defect. This is really the, the last option in, in our practice. So here we have a, a very interesting case of a patient. We, we just uh, deploy the first flange into the small intestine. We deploy in the second flange and you can see unfortunately the flange migrates into the peritoneum. It's very important at that stage to salvage the wire because the wire is still into the small intestine through the stent. So all you have to do is advance a TTS stent, a Zephagil um, short stent. In this case, we use the Taiwan of uh, 20 millimeter by, uh, by uh, uh, 60 uh, millimeter length. And you can see it's very important here to uh, end uh, the, the TTS stand into the small bowel through the, the first flange and the second 
uh, flanges open into the stomach, completely covering the stent to prevent any migration. And the patient do, did extremely well um, and went on and was palliated for six months, even got chemo radiation in this case without any problem. So another uh, complication that can happen is when the, the flange in the small intestine, unfortunately, uh, doesn't stay there. So in this case, we have an open window into the peritoneum. It's very important to remain calm and to, to, to deal with this in a practical fashion. I'm going to, at this stage, take a 2T scope and then go with the 2T scope into uh, the axios. With the left channel, I'm going to grab the, the bowel with a ratus forceps. With the right uh, channel, I'm going to advance a needle knife. And then while I'm maintaining, uh, you know, you know, tension on the on the bowel, I'm going to get access into the bowel uh, with a needle knife. I'm going to inject contrast to confirm that indeed I am into the bowel. Here I am confirming my access to the bowel. And then over the wire, I'm going to place uh, another uh, tie wound stent, the TTS stent, you see here. Uh, one of the end is into the small bowel, the other end into the stomach. In this case, I went for an 80 uh, millimeter length, 20 millimeter uh, diameter. And you can see here, uh, you know, we have a very nice um, bridging. Uh, this is the next day, a gastrography study confirming that the stent was in good position. The patient was sent home eating um, a clear diet, advanced to soft very fast. So as a conclusion, EOS guided gastroenterostomy is an exciting new minimally invasive option for patients with gastric artery obstruction. It's clearly non inferior and possibly safer compared to a surgical GJ. It's non inferior with clear benefit in terms of recurrence and reintervention compared to enteral stenting. It is important to standardize the technique and understand the, the technical complexity associated with this procedure. Coder and Hans and more than five years of experience now have given us consensus about being able to do this procedure. We are clearly now ready for prime time. But if you embark on doing us gathered gastroenterostomy, you have to be able to manage complication whenever, whenever you're dealing with them. Thank you for, so much for your attention. It was really a true pleasure and honor to, to, to give this talk to you and I remain available to, to, to any question.